Major League Paintball is coming to Las Vegas for the first event of the 2024 season. At its heart, the game of paintball is simple. Shoot your opponents before you get shot, and then march down the field to victory. In the Major League Paintball Pro format, each team employs five players at a time, and they have a buzzer on their side to protect. Hit the opponent's buzzer, win the point. En route to the buzzer, both teams will be locked in gunfights, utilizing diverse strategies while moving up a field full of bunkers, fighting to get into critical positions. And these strategies could change given the score and the time left on the clock. There's 15 minutes in regulation. The highest point total wins the game. This is chess with guns, with no quarter given and no quarter requested. Welcome to Major League Paintball. Welcome to Go Sports Live. The beginning of the 2024 season is about to go down and have some of the leading lights in the game to discuss the layout, the brackets, as we are about a week and a half away from the uh, first gun shot in anger for this season. And it's going to be kicking off here March 8th through the 10th in Las Vegas. I'm Matty Marshall, and I got Joey Blute and Todd Martinez to join us here at the start of the show. We're also going to be bringing in Coach of the Hurricanes and host of the Coach's Show. Mike Bianca is going to be joining us in a little bit. After that, we're going to get Pat McKenna, former offensive coordinator for Houston Heat, head coach for Revo and Damage back in the day, uh, and now coming out with some new paintball stats. Going to pick his brain for a little bit, talking about where he came up with that and where they're going to be going with it, what we're going to see in 2024. And then we're going to bring uh, Steven Peterson in as well, too, from SVV Paintball. He's been doing some cool stuff for us here for Go Sports. So, yeah, man, looking drastically looking forward to the start of this season. Can't wait to see how things are going to shake out. So many stories, 20 professional teams, hundreds of teams in every other division. We got the WNXL this year. Semi-Pro could be a battleground again as it has been for years. Blast Camp and Paintball Fit making the jump up from last season. We got Chicago Aftershock with resurgence there. The Ironmen have completely reformed, and it's going to be a crazy season. Just stories across the board. It's, yeah, got to jump right into this conversation here. So let's bring in. Todd Martinez and uh, Joey Blute. So Todd Martinez, uh, Todd Martinez, who coached in Houston Heat last year, past couple seasons, and then uh, parted ways with Houston Heat. But man, didn't miss a beat. Just picking it right up with this resurgence of Chicago aftershock, which he helped uh, lead the charge as an offensive, uh, you know, just kind of a, a wrecking ball for them years ago, uh, back in the heyday uh, or the inception, essentially, of the NXL. And then Joey Blute, man, Jesus. Tampa Bay Damage has been on a tear the past couple seasons, ranked second overall at the end of last season, two wins in a row midway through the year, another win uh, the year before. So definitely a, a big favorite to uh, potentially take down Dynasty. That's kind of also one of the big stories here, but the layout just dropped. So boys, before we throw the layout up here, just want to check in real quick. Todd, obviously a lot of change in the off season. You're no stranger to that as you've coached Infamous and Vicious and Ironman and all these different teams over the years. Now, you know, uh, with Houston Heat, led them to a win, your second event with the squad. Uh, but it was a you know tough season last year. So consistent, but a, a, a tough World Cup. But now this crazy story with Shock. So we're going to touch base with you there. And then, Joey, I definitely want to hear what you have to say about Tampa Bay Damage, how you guys are looking. Um, is everyone going to be healthy? Is everyone going to be present? Uh, what's the motivation? Got to be probably at the very pinnacle of motivation right now, considering how good you guys were last year. But Todd, we'll, we'll check in with you first. I know you've been grinding with shock. You guys are putting some time in. What's the vibe like on the team right now? How you feeling? How's it looking? Thank you, Maddie. Blessed to be on this show again. God is great. Uh, glad to have another opportunity to coach again in the NXL. Um, very excited for this team, man. Um, we did just spend four days out of paintball fit. Uh, JD, uh, Colt, Trent, everybody from Paintball Fit uh, on the team and, you know, their community took really good care of us um, from uh, a, a fridge full of Uncrustables, you know, to uh, one of those 7-Eleven rolling hot dog machines, you know, to uh, ice cold waters <laughs> and delicious drinks uh, all day, every day. You know, it was a very, very fun weekend. I mean, we were out there from morning until the sun went down every single day. And, you know, just such a good vibe with the team. So many good guys. Um, it's nice to be back with the group that we put together in uh, 2020. Um, got to play one tournament together and then never played together again. Um, since then, Peyton Devada went to the Navy. Um, Dan Norcross is about to release his uh, first album. And, uh, you know, we were able to pick up Corwin Weber. Uh, Trent Nita 
and uh, Clay Hughes. And uh, I think those guys are going to be some very valuable additions to, you know, that core of Corey, LJ, Nick, A-Rod, Thomas, uh, and Al Fernandez. So, um, you know, we got a really cool team. Uh, it was really fun letting all the rest of the guys on the team get to know Todd Adamson the way I know Todd Adamson. Uh, he's such a great guy. Um, we have his full support. Um, having Tammy out there all the time as well. You know, Tammy's very involved with the team. And, you know, our most recent pickup was uh, Fran Terubiartes. Uh, we got Clayton and Tom Boyer as well. So, you know, from our pit crew to ownership to all the players, um, I feel like we got a really good thing going. Um, I forgot Silos too. We got Silos. Silos back in effect, right? He's looking good, feeling good, you know, shredded ready to stab somebody. So, um, you know, I really am just blessed to be in a, a good situation. Thanks to uh, Joe Stradamus, you know, and his, you know, uh, <laughs> vision that he saw, you know, for my future back in October and, you know, gave me the uh, awareness to be, you know, prepared and, you know, his insightfulness of, you know, things to come for my future. And, you know, he just, uh, you know, made me, you uh, uh, be ready for, you know, whatever may come my way. And here we are, you know, suited and booted head to toe SC village, Jackson weapons, you know, aftershock GI sports die, you know, we got all sorts of sponsors, you know, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's a good day. You know, it's a good day. Every single day is a blessing. So we're going to get into that a little bit here after we go through the layout, but yeah, man, I mean, uh, you know, that's why one of the reasons I give you guys calls for shows like this, because you guys are never at a, a loss for words, but you nailed that perfectly. It's a stack lineup. Everyone's expecting great things out of shock. You're sitting in tier five in bracket D. We're going to discuss the brackets in a little bit. Joey, you guys are in a completely different situation, though. You know, you're sitting in, in tier one, second overall, right behind Dynasty. Uh, badass year for you guys last year with the two wins, as we said, during the Open. A win the year before. It had been a long time, though. But man, if you only a fool will look at the roster for damage and think, okay, these guys don't have much of a chance to win a bunch of tournaments this year. You guys are one of the huge favorites, other than Dynasty, and they got a bunch of dudes that, you know, I mean, for them, uh, it's amazing for their families. But they got a lot of guys with their wives pregnant. There's it's a lot of question marks are going to be thrown into Dynasty this year. Talk to me about, at, before we get to the layout here, Joey, what's the mindset like on damage? Um, you know, obviously you guys went in a cup, wanted to, to, to pull off that big victory there. It didn't happen. Um, but uh, uh, that team is, you need, as we always say, you need threats, offensive threats, and you need vets. And, and basically the vets are the offensive threats. And then you have, you know, as you've just masterminded the general manager and coaching thing here, like you said, uh, Joe Stradamus, as, as Todd so eloquently put, to put it all together, but just before we, you know, we'll get into a little bit more. Um, we got a little bit of time before we get to Mike Bianca in about 25 minutes. Uh, we got to get to the layout brackets and stuff, but yeah, just give me, just give me like a, a little bit of a taste quick rundown. Of what it's like right now. Yeah. Yeah. Quick rundown. So the, the boys are hungry, you know, uh, as much as it sucks that we did not perform like we wanted to at cup, it might've been the best thing for us and the worst thing for the rest of the league. Um, the dude's, haven't had two weeks off in a row. Everybody's playing. Um, I mean, you guys know Chad Bougie. He usually touches the layout practices and the other ones that we force him to go to. Besides that, he likes to fish and, you know, make sushi. Um, but he literally, he, I did uh, the coaches show and I did a thing on there and I said, Chris Horton's coming for Chad's spot. Uh, the second he heard it, he texted me, go fuck yourself. Chris Horton will never take my spot. Uh, I'm going to be hungrier and stronger and better. Um he, he's been out putting the work in, you know, same with Key, same with Chris, same with Marky, same with Brian. Like these guys are, they're playing three, two, three times a week right now. So, um, you know, it, the way I consider paintball is it's like a marathon. Um, and my dudes have been running it a long time. The only time you can catch them is if they take a break and they're not taking a break, they're pushing harder. So uh, we're coming back with the same roster. Uh, we didn't change anything on the actual players. Uh, we did make an addition into the coaching staff. We brought Chris Jansen in. Um, he's going right. to be there to, to help with everything. Um, you know, he's such a nice dude too. It'll make it so people like us more because we're not the most liked team, which is okay. I, I honestly don't really care. Um, you know, you can hate us. We're still going to win. It is what it is. But yeah, no, we're hungry. We want it. And as far as, you know, 
hooking Todd up with, with the inside info. I always got to take care of the boys, you know, the bros before hoes. <laughs> well, yeah, there's just, you know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes as this all kind of shakes out because it's a small crew, man. You know, when you look at the yep. available, like elite coaches that could possibly lead a team to the, you know, to, to the, to the glory that, you know, that is a, a victory at a tournament. It's so hard to win tournaments. So few teams have been able to do it for forever. I mean, it's, it's never been easy. I mean, we got 20 pro teams, there's 200 pro players, but when we talk about elite and we talk about favorites, you no, know, we can make arguments about some of these teams that are sitting down tier four, tier five. But when we really start dialing in and having the real conversations and, but this is why the first event is always so fascinating to me. So, but layout like styles make fights and in paintball, it's a, you know, three dimensional field. And, and, and what that layout is like is very contingent to what could potentially happen and what possible, you know, is it an offensive layout, slightly more defensive? I mean, there's a little bit of a mixed bag as always, but the NXL decided to start out the year with the giant curveball for everybody. And uh, if we could get our, uh, the Iceman to throw that up for us, Darren Sassenia, our producer extraordinaire, there's the layout. So, you know, I mean, I start my phone. I didn't even get a chance to look at it before my phone started blowing up and people were like, Maddie, what do you think about this? How are you going to commentate this? You know, because it, it's a bit of a shock. You know, I mean, we're starting off the year with a very unconventional layout. So kind of a la uh, and reminiscent back to Texas a, a few years ago. Um, Who won that event, Maddie? Who I mean, won that Texas event? Yeah, well, I was I was you took the words oh, right shit, out of my mouth. Joe, okay, let, then Joey. So, Joey, let me throw it to you. So what were your initial thoughts on this? We talked a little bit in the green room before we started the show, but, you know, just talk to me about my, what, my what initial, your initial thoughts. thoughts and we I looked at this layout and I said, <laughs> I said, damage is going to do really well in this layout. And then I also looked at this layout and said, this is going to be horrible for people that are watching paintball. And if we're trying to get people to watch paintball, this is not the kind of layout we need. Now, from a manager coach of damage standpoint, I look at this and say, yeah, let's do this every event. Um, this is going to be a, a, a this is going to be a shooter's field. You know, it's going to be a lot of gunfights, a lot of winning your side, a lot of making the pushes through. You know, I, I think come late Saturday, early Sunday, it's going to slow down drastically once we weed out the pretenders for the contenders. Um, you know, we got to practice it still, so there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be seen. But just looking at it, I see it being a crazy fast run around because there's so many teams playing at to start with. Um, on the first day, except for, you know, like when you get the teams that shouldn't be in the bottom brackets that are in the bottom brackets, like when the Russians finally get their chance, they, they moved up a little bit, but they're still lower ranked than they should be. Um, you got the, the, the Canes, like the Canes went from a tier two to a tier three because they sucked a cup, right? Like those guys, they're still a good team. And, you know, once it starts to figure itself out again, as the season starts to wear on, it'll fix itself a little bit, but it's going to be a, a it's going to be insane the first day. There's going to be people flying everywhere. Um, you know, it, it's going to be good. I, I I don't dislike this layout. I just don't think it's going to be fun for people watching, which if we want to really truly grow this, as much as it needs to be fun for the players, it has to be fun for the people watching who don't really know what's going on. All right, so I'm going to need you guys to start a fight, right? First game, dude. Um, somebody gets kicked out for a game, and then everyone's going to be like, oh, damage. Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Todd, let's check in with you and see what you think. Uh, obviously, both you guys have seen you know, more than a few layouts over the years. This one is a bit unconventional. Like we said, talking about, you know, uh, that we, you know, you can go back and watch some of the games that happened on a, on a, a similar type layout, essentially because – the Dorito side guys are going to have to fight left-handed the whole game uh, when they're fighting heads up. And then you, you get your potent snake side attackers, but from, and maybe Todd and, and Joey will weigh in on you before we uh, close out the you know field portion of this and you know, all the shows and big shout out to everyone doing content, man, like go watch, play the game, go watch Spick and span. Ryan Moffat's got an awesome show. The coaches show. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people diving into this layout here Uh and uh and and breaking this all down because this is just something we're not used to seeing todd but you know from a tactical perspective well well first of all what were your thoughts when you first saw it and then break it down uh, you know tactically as, as joey was kind of alluding it's going to be wild but then it's going to slow down what do you what do you think do you agree with that disagree well obviously the first thing that i thought of looking at this was thinking back to that texas event um, I don't. I don't can't remember who won because the scoreboard broke 
as we were about to go close one of our games. I, I didn't catch the score on the scoreboard as the game was, was ending. So was I, I, can't really, we I really can't. Oh, okay, that's right. That's who it was. Um, but, uh, you know, I I remember the I remember the field being kind of one-sided oh. the way that they did. Oh, he's got to get there? the trophy. You still have it? Got it. Oh, there, there it is. Lone Star Open. There it is. That's the one. 20, That's the one. 2022. Yeah. The big yeah. win. Big. You should send uh, Jacob Edwards a, dude, uh, just, uh, we're talking about the win. I wanted you to go drink on me tonight, bro. Here's 30 bucks. Go go handle it. <laughs> yeah. Jacob Edwards with the big one-on-one. -on -one. That was fun to watch. Um, yeah, but, but so like on that other field layout. So the other field layout, it was it was uh, very one sided, right? Well, the way that it was set up, like one side you could run all the way, and the other side there was a giant gap, and at the end of the event, people were not running very far on that uh, Dorito side, right? So I'm actually interested to see what the gaps are going to look like for shots on the break when we go out there and actually get on the field. But I'm not opposed to a layout like this, right? Um, you just have to kind of change, uh, adjust your strategy. Um, you know, how you look at the field because it is, you know, Dorito guys are always going left-handed and snake guys are always going right-handed. Um, so, I mean, there is five bunkers across the back, you know, whenever you have all five of those bunkers, you see a lot of teams, they don't take risks. They go and they hide in those five back spots. You know, we'll see how the run is to the snake on both sides of the field. Um, the way that that middle thing played a big difference last time because there was so much chaos in that middle that it was almost to the point where, um, you know, you had to be up in that middle and then go trade out with those guys. And then it was very difficult for the referees to, um, you know, make some of those calls when those big explosions happen. But those kind of were the things that allowed the guys to move down the tapes on either side when it came to that standstill. So, um, damage last year really utilized those bricks off to the side of the uh, um, big center structure, um, which I thought they were one of the few teams to do, you know, regularly because you know they had one side, one squad playing this side, and one squad playing the other side, and they had fast guys on both squads running to those big bricks right away and looking uh, over those that inside structure. So. You know, are those things going to play a factor? You know, you have the two big towers up there in the middle, right? How much does that block off? But, you know, anytime you have structures on the sides of the field that, you know, are, you know, 60, 70, 80 feet long, you know, anything can go down uh, when you can get to the other team's side of the field. But so I think we're missing a couple snake beams that they probably forgot to add in <laughs> that they'll probably throw in later. Well, I, I, I'm glad you brought the middle because I think when people see such chaos, uh, at least, you know, breaking convention and, and in the sense. Of, so when I say chaos, I mean, we're breaking convention. We're, you know, uh, changing things up. Typically, you have a Dorito side and a snake side, which makes you know my life a little bit easier and the people watching it a little bit easier. And now we're going to have a snake on both sides, Doritos on both sides again. Um, so identifying when we do do the show and people are watching. It's going to be, you know, red, red side, you know, uh, red snake side, blue snake side, or, you know, maybe we can come up with something else. But, but, the, but when I looked at this, okay, your attention does go towards the, the outsides with the snake on both sides and, and the way that that's going to play. And I was just kind of wondering your guys' expert thoughts. And then, Joey, let's throw it back to you. That middle, you know, like Todd was saying, that when you do have um, something seductive on the outside and something that is pr productive and seductive, meaning you can produce kills from there. And it's a, 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 a you know, just a, a, a it's a battleground over there. You got to send bodies, but it, it kind of becomes seductive in a way where you know you can't forget that middle. But I just you know we and any time anyone ever asked me about a field layout, I'm like ah well you know I've seen a, a lot of field layouts over the years, so I'll give you my opinion on it. But I until I actually see it played, and we're going to be doing a uh, a, a practice uh, session, practice report from um, the event going down in uh, Sacramento where it's going to be infamous uh, dynasty. An impact um so we'll, we'll have you guys some of that content so I'm, i really can't wait to see how this does play but i'm just wondering your guys's thoughts so joey that middle you know like todd was saying you guys ability to kind of not just completely focus your attack and your and your presence really more of the presence on those outside situations and those positions and also you know 
being productive in the middle, what are your thoughts on this middle? Because of the way that it's, you know, tiered out, you know, towards the snake on both sides, I'm, I'm just wondering how much uh, effort and emphasis people are going to be putting towards attacking that middle. And I, again, I just, I really kind of can't wait to see how it plays out. Yeah, no, I think I think the middle is going to be pretty key on this field um, for sure. I, you know, if you get into that that center gymnasium down there with the snakes connected to it, you know, you're going to get lost in there. Um, if you get to the right spot and sit on a cross, you could if you could stop them from getting to into their first beam and you get into anywhere in that middle, they're not going anywhere into that snake. And if you could prevent that and you can make the snake, you know, that's going to be quick points. So I think the middle is going to be pretty key. Obviously, we have to play this thing before we really get a, a real feel for it. But yeah, right now, the way I look at it is you're probably going to send, you're going to risk the snake on the break if it's something that's a 60% success rate. If it's less than that, you're going to choke it up and you're going to second move into it. But I could see you entering the snake from the Dorito side from that, that little command center thing, the little stupid uh, notch one. I think if, mm -hmm. if you go from there into the double beam, I think you could reverse the snake and actually make that more of a snake than the other side. Uh, it looks like there's a lot more ground you have to cover to actually get to the other stuff to be able to feed into that. You know, and the fact that the the corners are actually inset, where if you get to the corners and they get to the snake, it's not going to turn out well for you. So, you know, I, I, this has got to be practiced quite a bit before we get a real feel for it. Um, I'm glad this wasn't the blind layout field. And if it was, I would be glad that I'm the one o'clock and three o'clock game so I could watch other people, a lot of other people stumble <laughs> around on it because this Very is going to be, uh, this is going to be, you know, I mean, it's going to take, I, I say by Saturday, Todd and I will probably have a game plan that should be able to win us the tournament as long as the guys produce, but it's going to be a full, full Friday, Saturday before we can figure that out. You know, this normally, honestly, normally in the first day, I'm pretty confident in a base play that will get us to the finals. Uh, Todd, middle of the field, your thoughts before we get into these brackets and talk about some of these big captivating stories here heading into the first event, which again, everyone is going down two weeks from now or two weekends from now, eight through the 10th, which you can find on go sports or go watch in Las Vegas, Craig, uh, Craig ranch regional park. But yeah, middle, I mean, if you had a, a gun to your head as much painful as you, uh, as you have seen, I'm just wondering how, how important, you know, we have these conversations about the field. Okay. D side. Which is the strong side? Typically, it's the snake side. Some occasionally, it's the D side. But then it's like, okay, well, the middle. How much is that going to play a factor in this? It's always going to be a factor. It's just how much. Are you going to have game-winning points? You know, is an A rod. You guys got A rod, right? A rod is a one of the best bruisers and bullies ever in the history of modern paintball, particularly in the middle of the field. There's a reason why that guy gets paid money to play the game. He's on your team now, and he's hungry. I talked to A rod yeah. right before he went on a show. Uh, or went to, you know, he's a musician, so he's about to go do a show. And he was like, oh, Matt, I only got like 10 minutes. We talked for like 25 minutes right before he went on because he was so stoked about <laughs> this journey and shock and everything. And he was pumped up and he's like, he took it to the very end before, right before he walked on stage, essentially from what it seemed like. Um, you know, so when I look at this middle, I'm like, I don't know, you know, I want to see it played out again. We could spend the entire time. Again, we got to bring Mike Bianca in here. We got to get, you know, Patrick McKenna. We got to get to some other dudes, but there's some intricacies up there, but I'm just, you know, gun to your head. How much do you think the center is going to play into the overall effect of, of, of those offensive moves into the overall results for the tournament? Well, the funny thing, Maddie, is that I was actually in the crowd waiting for him to come on while you were out in the back, you know, talking to A-Rod on the phone. <laughs> you know, we're on the crowd being Xander, Xander. You know, we were just trying to get him to come on out, you know. And then finally he hung up the phone and came out and, and rocked the stage. You know what I'm saying? But like, for sure, you know, for girls sure. are throwing panties, guys are throwing drinks, you know, like bras. it was pandemonium. Double D there. bras we'll up let there. You know, right. <laughs> yeah. Double D bras everywhere. Um, but you know, I don't even know if A-Rod will go there. Cause if you look at that middle, you know, it's technically a snake, you know, and I got a lot of snake guys, you know, so I might throw a snake guy over here. Snake guy goes left. Snake guy goes right. Snake guy goes up the middle. You know, I might let A-Rod float around, on all the other bunkers, you know, maybe he won't go up the middle. Right. Um, so I don't know. We'll see, you know, again, it's going to come down to like what those angles look like uh, when you get out on the field, uh, you know, how well can you stop people from getting in those snakes? Because, you know, you get in one of those snakes, crawl, shoot a guy off the side, and then all of a sudden you're shooting multiple people in the back. Right. So um, 
you know, with uh, everything goes according to plan, we'll just go in the snakes, crawl to the end of all of them, you know, and just shoot everybody in the back and uh, it'll be great. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's really hard to say, but this is why you keep like five or six snake guys on the team, you know, for fields like this. Just wait till 2025. Yeah, so we might not just be all snake guys. <laughs> so, Todd, let's talk about that because, I mean, damage is the roster unless some, I don't know, cataclysmic thing happened. Joey, let us know. Probably maybe you won't. I don't know. But, I mean, everyone knows what damage is going to bring, be bringing. You know, like it, it just – can they execute? If they do, they're going to be in the finals. If they can't, well, they're going to still be on there on Sunday, but it's just how far do they get. But Shock is a big unknown. You know, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing roster. And you had said, and you didn't even toot your guys' own horn, but I will, because you're like, oh, we only got one event with the team in 2020, an event you guys won in Vegas and with the Los Angeles Ironman, with a big core of the dudes that are currently going to be on Chicago Aftershock. And then now you add a very hungry Clay Hughes, who is, was the stud for the Ironman last year. I mean, he was one of the bright, like they did not have a lot of bright, shining lights last year on the Ironman. It was a, an abysmal year, unfortunately, for the Shield. And as somebody that played for that team for six years, and help them win some titles, Todd. I know you've been there before too. And Joey, you know, you grew up watching it and fighting against those guys as well, too. But it's like, man, that was really frustrating to watch. So I, I like that they really went as as hard as they could to get the talent that they feel that they need in order to do better. But I feel losing Clay Hughes was was that's it's unfortunate for the Los Angeles Ironman. You guys are the beneficiary now of that talent. I think that Clay could have a big season. Um, but you also have a lot of hungry guys that could play that role. And with those, you know, having an LJ Woodley and a Corey Hall and, you know, I mean, when we're looking at these sides and snakes and D side and, you know, versatility will be, and that specific metric of greatness will be at a premium here on a layout like this. So, and I'm not, you don't have to give me all the goods here, but it, it, you got to be kind of a little, I, if I was you, I'd be maybe a little happy about this layout because you do have so many versatile dudes that can play so many different spots, you know, uh, and uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know who your left best left-handed gun battler is, but. Because all those D side guys just have to come battle left handed the entire time, and yeah, everyone will say like, "Oh, these guys can shoot just as good left and right handed." I'm like, "Can they?" You know, not everyone can. That <laughs> that's not always how it works out, bro. Like, sorry, but that's not reality. I don't know. Your so your thoughts on just the roster you're bringing to this, who you see in what position? Again, I I know you may not want to talk about this, but I got to ask the question. But I could see you kind of playing some jazz and 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 getting things. A little chaotic as far as scoutability is concerned with a layout like this with the roster you have yeah i'm actually really excited about the roster you know with all the names that i mentioned uh, the guys that i've spent the least amount of time with are obviously clay corwin and trent right and you know just in the four days that we just got i was so impressed with those guys you know, and everything that they brought to our team and you know the key word that you mentioned is definitely versatility you know I've been so excited to see this layout and see what it's really, you know, what it was going to look like because, you know, obviously I'm going to start from the top down, you know, I'm going to find the best spot for a rod to play, you know, and then go down my list of, you know, who I think uh, can be successful where, but, you know, I was 2020, you know, was a long time ago. And uh, you know, we are all the guys on the team are all three years better, three years more experienced, um, you know, three years more, uh, you know, practiced in their ways of the gunfight right so uh it was really nice and refreshing to come back and you know have a new group of guys but you know kind of have that old feel and see how much better all these guys have gotten and how much more opportunity there is for me to put them in different positions so you know at the end of the day it always comes down to communication um you know and the respect that we have for each other and our uh, ability to work together and um you know, be accountable to each other as well as, you know, uh, our, uh, you know, our overall goals, right? So, you know, we just got a lot of good guys that are very versatile, that are willing to put the team first. And that's what we were looking for from the very beginning. And I think we got that. And I think we're probably the most excited than anybody to get this season started. So it's going to be fun. I mean, Joey, I can throw the same question to you uh, in the sense that, you know, we got, a, you know, versatility. It, 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 I just, I don't know. It's, it's versatility is like a kind of a, that's a knee jerk thing for damage. You guys have a ton of guys that can play a lot of different positions. So 
I'm not even going to ask you that question. We do need to get Mike Bianca in here. He's, uh, you know, host, host the coach show. They got a, a show going on tonight too. So we got to move on to the brackets. Um, but, um, but yeah, so let's jump into the brackets a little bit here before we bring Mike in. Um, or maybe if we could just bring Mike in now, do we, if we got Mike, let's bring Mike in now if possible, Darren, uh, just so we can get him clear. Um, but here's the brackets. And as we discussed on the open, you got group A, group B, group C, A, B, C. So, and D. And um, I, I think it's blatantly apparent that group A is the bracket of death. Uh, it's kind of a care for what you wish for situation for, I don't know. I see Joey going in. Eh, I don't know. Well, let okay, Joey, let me just throw it to you. What other bracket is the, is the bracket of death other than the bracket that has AC Diesel in tier four and Legion in tier three and X Factor and Dynasty also in your bracket? Present I mean, the argument to me D. that's, that's that, where's the other bracket <clears throat> of death? So Dynasty Damage is a wash. Infamous, if they show up like they, they can show up, Infamous X Factor, we don't know what X Factor is going to be this year. Should they be as good or better? Possibly. Will Infamous be as good or better? Possibly. So I'm going to give that a wash. I would put the Canes over the Russians. Uh, AC Notorious, I mean, Notorious, I don't know what we're going to see from them, but I'll be honest, there's no telling what we're going to see from AC. Uh, they got a star-studded roster, and Ryan Gray's coaching them now, so I expect them to be better. Maybe they have an edge there. Ironman Blast Camp, I'd put my money on the Ironman over Blast Camp. So if we're just going head-to-head -head comparing tiers, I, I don't necessarily agree with you. I think if Infamous, Hurricanes, and Ironman show up the way they could, I think Group B could be that, that, that or harder. Uh, group D could be the same thing too. If NYX shows up as the top four team like they were at the beginning of the year last year, and then Aftermath shows up as a top six team like they were at World Cup, and if Aftershock is everything Todd says they are, I mean, that could arguably be four studs again. I think the Bears are going to have a little bit of a growing pain to start with. Um, same as Blast Camp, same as Notorious. But, you know, honestly, I'd say A, B, and D are all super hyper competitive ones now if you're just basing it off of names i, I agree and i agree history but i and what they used to slightly. be and what they could have been i mean the russians haven't they looked okay at world cup besides that they were dog shit the last two years uh ac diesel was dog shit the last last year i mean they made sunday one time so if we're basing it off of most recent history off of most recent history just base it off a of world cup alone if we just base it off a of world cup group b is significantly harder than group a X Factor didn't make the yeah, cut. Russians got knocked out early. AC didn't make the cut. But we can't. Blast Camp just got here. Joey, we can't. Like, and you know this, and I love arguing with you. And we very rarely, like, like we always joke behind the scenes that we agree on ninety five percent of the stuff, and then the five percent we kind of agree. We just have different ways of displaying it. But I don't know, man. I mean, like, I, I do. I don't think we can just go off what happened at Cup because so much stuff has okay. happened. I mean, so let's base it off the year. You know, we can just base it off okay. the whole year if you want, Maddie. And if we do that, it's the same no. thing. Infamous made more okay. Sundays than than definitely yeah, but than not the whole year. Reason. What happened in the off season? Like we have to we have to talk well, about what the teams are bringing right now. So if you look at groups, so just real quick, the, just if, give me if that's the case, then I would say yeah. Damage is by far the best team because we had no changes, which means we'll be the most consistent because we'll have the best chemistry of all the teams from last year. Because even Dynasty had and, changes on their roster. Well, and also Dynasty has a bunch of dudes that have their wives pregnant and they have to deal with all that stuff this year, too. Or you guys don't have How to do these with old ass that. men have kids. I don't even understand this. They're like 40 years old. Stop well, it. As an as an old ass Jesus. man that had kids, I, it just it happens when it happens. So it is what it is. But well, I had, I, okay, I had so, a kid as an old ass man, too. But 40? Come on. Settle down, boys. Bro, I, was, I, I was 42 <laughs> when I had my kid, but I'm glad he's here, you know. But the thing uh, is, is okay. that. Uh, OK, but let's but let's talk about this. All right. So you got. Yeah. I blame PayPal for that because I was wilding out hard for my first part of my life. Anyway, but like, all right, so you got Group A, Group A, and then you got Group B, Groups at C and D. Uh, now, Todd, we got to get you to weigh in here before we bring Mike in. Um, but so you, I think Group C is arguably the easiest group. And then you have Group Agreed. B and D. We could discuss that. But when you look at the situation, okay, like, okay, yes. New, so where, what tiers, as we've all talked behind the scenes about this, when we look at these tiers and, and on air too. But you look at the at the different tiers. In Group D, New York Extreme just lost one of their starters in Corey Hall. And we do not know how, like, if they have Jerry Caro healthy the entire year, okay, cool. Like, whatever, we can go man for man on that. But that's that's the, the tier two group right there. And then Revo in Group C, which, whatever, we let's just not talk about Group C, at least right now. Maybe we can get Fair. Mike DeWayne on Group C. But, you know, I mean, Group C is just like, okay, look, fit is – you know, obviously it's not even close. Like they, they are the best semi-pro team probably to ever exist. 
They have pro experience. They're going to be super hungry. No one plays more paintball. Yeah, I can't wait to see what fit does. And I wish them the best of luck. And, and to have a fit in your tier five with group C, that throws a little bit of a bowling ball for them. But Revo's on a rebuild. ML Kings, we'll see what they got. And then Uprising had a really rough year last year, man. 18th, 17th, 14th, 15th, and 18th for Uprising. That's a bad year. You know, I mean, so, but they have the same group they've had together forever. Um, I, I think, I don't think Ilya is going to be there for the, I don't know if the first event or they're going to have many more, but anyway, but going to group D. Okay. So extreme loses one of their starters aftermath, definitely a threat. They had an amazing world cup. They beat some big teams and, uh, they've been grinding super, uh, they've been grinding as hard as any team has been grinding. Um, bears, who knows shock, obviously a favorite. So I think it's more of like, what's the, what's, what's the harder you know, is it group B harder than group D? I mean, Joey, you make it, you know, like, yeah, Ironman with their rebuild, like to have the Ironman in tier five, that's a rough draw for anybody because, but, we, but that's a fresh look for them. Are they going to be ready to go? Is shock going to be ready Canes to go? In tier, the Canes is, in tier three, the same thing though. Like the, the Canes are not a tier yeah. three team. They had a bad world cup. They're a tier two team, 100%. So, so if they're in tier two, then this changes everything, but they're not right now. So I have a, I have two tier two teams in, in one spot canes and infamous are the same damn thing they're both tier yeah. two teams iron men are not a tier five team anymore so well, I, listen on paper i get it name recognition who they are what they should be yachty fucking yachty yeah group a should be the bracket of death but uh, not having played an event yet i i completely disagree with any bracket of death at this point in my opinion it's pretty gnarly between a b and d now c if he doesn't win that bracket, then I maybe maybe Baby Sarge should just well, go ahead and hang up the thing and turn over the, the candles with the keys to somebody else well, because I, that that should be a, a walkthrough for them. Well, hold on. We were trying to get Mike in here. Mike, are you still there? I would like to bring Mike into this because he does have a heart out. I'm not sure ex he said what time it is, but oh, there he is. Okay, okay, cool. So, Mike, how how long do we have you for, bro? How long can I pick your your mind on this? You got me about five minutes. Okay, all right. Well, let's let you have the floor. Okay. So you have the floor. You are in Group B. We're having a discussion of what the bracket of death is, and and Joey is, which again, I'm not. I, this is this is why we have these conversations. It's it's not set in stone mm -hmm. here. Your bracket, damage, infamous, hurricanes. With you guys, with the performance you had a cup. Unfortunately, it was a rough one, you know. And then now we're heading into this Group B, um, with Notorious and the Ironman with the rebuild. What's your bracket of death? Give me your explanation for that. And then kind of talk me through whatever you want to say as long as we got you for, bro. Because And then shout out to the coaches show. They got a live show going down uh, here soon. So I know you got to go. But what do you got for us, brother? Well, um, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, Joey, you, you make some excellent points. Todd, you've made some great points. Matt, you've all made great points um, regarding the Canes and World Cup. I'll quote Lao Tzu, new beginnings are often disguised as, as painful endings. Um, but that's just a motivating, right? We don't want to waste our, our adversity, right? We're going to learn from it. We're coming back. We're working hard. We're, you know, I, every, every team's going to say that, right? Everyone has a plan to take a hit to the face. And I think this, uh, this layout is uh, we're going to see who can take a hit, right? We're going to see who can, who can really do that. So, uh, you know, regarding the bracket of death, the way I look at it is everybody's here to win, right? It's not a cop out. Listen to me on for just a moment. The simple fact is everybody wants to set the pace at the first event. So everybody, in my opinion, always brings their toughest game at that first event. You do have teams on a rebuild. I got to bang against the Ironmen uh, not too long ago with their new rebuild. They're looking good. They're they're coming together quick. If they can keep the trajectory they have, Joey's absolutely correct. They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be good. I think a lot of people don't need to be looking past Revo because if you look at the core that that team has and the team and the players they picked up, you've got some opportunity. I think they're going to be a dark horse. Uh, look, Dynasty is the team to beat. Damage is the team to beat. Um, Aftershock has a tremendous, uh, you know, Todd, you, you got a lot of hype going in there, man. You know, I wish you the best of luck carrying it. And so long story short, eh, I don't really care about bracket of death. I just want to perform. So long story short, I think, I'll tell you this, any team that comes out of bracket A and bracket B, the teams that win those brackets or, or come out of those brackets, they'll have been to war. And I don't think they're going to see anything on Sunday that they haven't already seen. So I think those, those two brackets will going to show you the team. I think the winner's coming out of that bracket, uh, one of those brackets. 
And then Mike, the that's a I love that take. Um, a couple of just questions again. You know, you tell me when you got to go. I, I know you got a lot on your plate, but I think one of the big questions, and this is kind of one of those scenarios where it's like, okay, damage fifth at Cup, man. Like that's not bad. That was a good showing. You guys, I think, with twenty first at Cup. So that and, and and as consistent as you guys did, a lot of people are like, wow, what happened to the Hurricanes at Cup? Obviously, Cup with the way the format is, it's it's pretty brutal, but it's still a paintball tournament. And, and it was, it was just, un, it looked uncare You guys looked uncharacteristic. It was, and, 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 but that to me might light a fire because you're bringing, you know, uh, the same roster back to 2024. And so when I look at the hurricanes, to me, that's one of the more captivating stories here. It's that, as we say, the blue collar ballers, if you love paintball and you like to grind and you think you can bring your team up from, you know, whatever division D D3, D4 and go pro. If you're not a fan of the hurricanes, I don't know what you're watching. So I'm just wondering where you where's where is the headspace right now for you guys? Where are you guys at mentally with that? You know, and you would say this, you're a stoic. It was an abysmal performance for you guys. That was the worst I'd ever seen you guys play since you guys came into the pro league. And I know you don't mince a lot of words. That's why, you know, you guys are on these types of shows. So I'm just wondering what's the mentality coming into this year? How do you feel the guys are are mentally sharpening their their swords for this battle? Being as that you guys are in a tough bracket, like Joey said. 100 percent um you know this is a crucible and uh i have an unpopular opinion uh i don't think a, a team strength comes from winning i think it's certainly augmented once you do win and uh but i do believe most team strength comes from adversity right we adversity develops strength when you're getting kicked around like at world cup and you don't give up you go back to the drawing board right and if you keep maintain that equal or greater enthusiasm that's a strength. And I think that's the cornerstone of the, the Kane success. We learned, hopefully we learned from cup. Uh, I'm a firm believer that the difference between an elite team and everyone else in this division is from the neck up, right? Uh, it's just one of those things that if, if you, if you're not willing to be uncomfortable, embrace adversity, you can't waste adversity. You and I talked about this earlier. If we can grow yeah. and learn from it, anyone can be elite, but it's an exclusive club. It's an exclusive club because not everyone's willing to or can do that. But I, I think the Canes are certainly a team that's that's willing, and my guys are are, are hungry. The, the question becomes, can we with the limited time we have? And, and I'll tell you this, we're certainly trying, and we're certainly exploring all of that. To me, excellence isn't winning or, or perfection. To me, excellence is about pushing yourself, finding the limit, giving your best. Excellence, excellence is controllable, right? Success isn't. So if you strive for excellence, then you should see success. And I think that's the approach we're taking. We're going to bring our best game we can. We're going to we're going to play the mental game. We're mixing a lot of things up during the offseason. I'm playing people. And I, you know, we're just we're really pushing them. And uh, I'm excited to see how the guys perform with this crucible that we're going to be in. Maybe last question I got you for, Mike, here. Uh, is, is everyone healthy? If you can say that, because I know some sometimes people got to play cards close to their chest. And then with this layout, how variable, you know, we talked about versatility, obviously with both damage and shock with Todd and Joey here, they got a lot of versatility on the attack. I feel that you guys also have versatility um, and you guys kind of are, are like the, you know, it, you, you do a play a damage esque style ball, which is anytime you guys play against them, it, it's fun to watch, but I'm just wondering, cause you know, this is a very controversial layout already. I mean, just today people are blowing up about this. So, you know, with your team, one, everyone healthy, yes or no, and if you're willing to tell me. And then two, as far as the versatility question with this layout, how does that, uh, uh, you know, applicable to your game plans, at least as you start this, the, the layout practice that's coming up this weekend? Well, there's no doubt that Joey and, and, and Todd both have significant depth, and uh, it's fantastic. Uh, the, the key is I have paintball players that, you know, certainly I play guys in, in as specialists, but we're all we're all working all aspects of the game. So as far as this layout's concerned, as far as how we're approaching it, A, we are all healthy. There is there is an issue that is lingering, but I'll hold that one to the chest. Um, but long story short, yeah, I think I think this field is going to be a good field for us. I think I think it's going to be an exciting field. Joey makes a good point though. It's going to be a pain in the butt for the refs. Uh, maybe not as good for the viewer either. But uh, it's definitely going to be challenging. And, well, we love challenges. So let's go. 
Well, man, thank you so much for your time, Mike. Uh, you willing for another question from Todd or Joey, or do you got to bounce? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll take it. I Yeah, I'd like to bounce. I'm, I'm enjoying this, but I do need to bounce, but I'll, I'll take one more. Todd, Joey, anyone got a question for Mike before uh, we let him go? Because he's got a show coming up. So basically what I got out of that was you agree that Group B is definitely harder than Group A, right? <laughs> I love the way how you frame things, Joey. That's why we're friends. Um, right. Yeah, I, I would say that Group B is is as competitive. But, you know, anytime Agreed. you're looking at Dynasty and damage, that's a wash. I think you're right. Um, I'm not sure you can compare X Factor and Infamous just yet. Um, you know, Infamous did have a, a good – uh, World Cup, and they they were in you know the hunt. They were several Sundays in. Um, obviously, we we pooped the bed at, at Cup Russian Legion. I think you're right. Russian Legion is one of those teams that I think is going to be another dark horse. You know, once they may start off slow, but I think they're going to be coming on pretty hard as the season goes. I do think Diesel is going to be a team to watch. Yeah, uh, knowing well, Ryan as well quick. as I do, and I'm not just saying that because he's my my co-host. But because I, I know what he's capable of, and I, I think if, I mean, if he can focus those guys, they're going to be dangerous. Well, just real quick, tier four. All right, can we have this real quick before we let you go, Mike? We got Diesel and Notorious. Are they real? Are you guys really talking about like I know Notorious nope. is uh, fought, you know punch above their weight class, but we're really comparing Diesel and their nope. rosters. I'm comparing Notorious you know, to Blast Camp. Nope. Notorious to Blast okay. Camp, Iron Man to Diesel. Yeah. That's what I'm comparing. Okay. Yeah. So God, God bless that, Blast okay. Camp. And that's a legit. Um, ar- that's a legit argument. But I just, yep. I'm just saying, I, I still think A is harder. Still think it's harder. So I, I, I think, think you guys are grossly as nails. I think Iron Men are going to be tough. Um, Notorious. Who knows what you're going to get with them? They do have some, yep. some at least one or two impressive pickups. I, I don't know how that will address their their play but uh god bless blast camp i mean talk about baptism by fire <laughs> for sure i think I, you guys we, are grossly it, 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 underestimating the loss of harris hussein from austin notorious <laughs> you know probably <laughs> the biggest pickup of the off season for the miami kings you know getting uh harris hussein from notorious you know i'm not sure how notorious is going to fare now right yeah, God bless them. Hey, All man. Right, we'll Bye, Bonios, you know. with God. Yeah. Yes, hey, sir. Thank, thank you so thank much. You so much. Yeah, best of luck. And uh, make sure everyone check out the Coaches Show. It's Ryan Gray, Mike Bianca. They're uh, bringing, you know, as everyone's trying to do the best and the brightest out here, just trying to keep this conversation going, man, in order to try to uh, give you. all the fans as much as we possibly can. Um, so we got uh, we yeah, got man. Patrick McKenna going to come on here in a, in a little bit talking about uh, the paintball stats thing he's got kicking off. And I've always talked about the five fingers of the sports marketing fist stats is one of them. I really like what he's been doing with that. You know, Todd, you worked with Pat for a while. So um, before I let you guys go and bring Pat on anything you want to say, you know, cause Pat, you know, coach Revo coach damage. I mean, Joey, you have some experience with Pat. Um, but I just, I really like what he's been doing with these stats. I think it's really good for, you know, for the sport. Uh, Todd, what do you think? Yeah, Maddie. I mean, you've been preaching this forever, right? Uh, you know, back in since we started doing the webcast, you know, with uh, Paintball Access and, um, you know, the PSP, we had the giant stats tower. There was 15 people up in there. Uh, we had the screens up in our booth and we were able to see what was going on in real time. And we were able to call the games with that additional information, having 15 other people feeding us information, keeping stats. It made the game more exciting. It gave us more stuff to talk about. Um, you know, and it, it, it just really fed into the excitement of the entire production. So, Matt, I know you've been promoting that, you know, as one of the five fingers of the fist since the very beginning. And, uh, you know, I fully support you and, you know, the push to make sure that we have all that stuff. So, you know, it's uh, definitely necessary. And you know, hopefully we can get uh, some accurate stats, you know, to really help uh, push the envelope for the overall scheme of, uh, you know, making paintball grow. And then Joey, I, just real quick, I, you know, as a, it's, it's hard to coach a pro paintball team, man. And you know, you got X's and O's, you're kind of a psychologist, you're all these different things. Um, but as far as like predictive <laughs> analytics or, you know, using that sort of stuff, like is it, how does that come? Does that, as you're coaching the team in the flow of the game, and, and cause you're like, Joey, you're one of the dudes that you're there from dawn to dusk. You're there. Like if I need somebody to go jump on a game, you're there. 
I'm like, okay, well, I love having you up there because you know it's really fun to listen to you talk about stuff because you know, as I always say, like straight shooter with upper management written all over them because you don't pull any punches, but you're all but you're present. And one of the best ability abilities is the availability. You're there all the time, dude. You watch all these games, you know. So I just uh I'm just wondering, like, when we look at these statistics, how much of that would because some teams use it more, and and this is just it's not just paintball, it's every sport. Baseball, same way. Football, same way. You know, so I'm just, you know, I know you kind of take a little bit of a liquid, had, you know, position in this. If we sometimes. had better, more accurate stats, it would definitely make Todd and mine job a million times easier. We don't, so it kind of makes our job a little bit easier, too, because nobody else does as well. Um, so it, it's one of those, it would be nice to have. It'd be really nice to have and no one else have. But if we all have the same stats that we can feed off of, that's going to be good for all of us. It's just going to create, I think it's going to create a little more work and it's going to make a, a percent better across the board. I'm there from dust. I'm there from first game to last game every single day, because if I can gain 1% off of doing that, that's the difference between winning and losing in overtime. Um, and that happens, especially with us a lot. Apparently we like to have to go to overtime and win. So with that being said, I can credit I can credit that one percent of us winning those events because I'm putting that extra work in because I have a little more stat information because I know when Tyler goes out he's going to this can and he's going to shoot if he lines up like this he's going to shoot this way if he lines up like that he's going to shoot that way so when we get to that final match and we're playing against them I can say if Connor Connor lines up on the outside he's going to run around the can if he lines up slightly on the inside he's going to run in front of the can which is a huge difference right if we know that we can catch him going that's that's the difference between winning and losing most most matches right because once you get to that deep deep sunday stuff it's not a matter of who's better it's a matter of who gets a little bit luckier and who has a slight edge whatever that slight edge is is usually the beginning of the difference between winning and losing a tournament so without a doubt like I, I feel it's it's a necessity and i think it just gives us a little better percent but i think stats would i mean i wouldn't have to be out there from sun up to sundown if we had perfect stats that's true. That's it. Make your life a lot easier, dude. Though, again, if I just selfishly, I, I like that you're there because I can be like, oh man, I need it. This has got a good game coming up. Who's around? It's eight o'clock in the morning. Joey's here. Let's get Joey up. Joey, Joey's down, always down to go, which I do appreciate because not everyone's always down to go, bro. You know, like some people get scared. Some people don't want to do it. Oh no, Maddie, I don't want to jump on the webcast. I, I'm a little too shy. You're like, bro, let's go. You want me? Let's calm down. I'll I think it's mostly because I don't. I just don't give a fuck. Like, truthfully, I Matt. just don't really care that much. <laughs> if I offend people, it is what it is. I don't really care. I have a lot of friends. My friends are my friends, and you don't have to be my friend. It's fine. Um, if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer, which is why a lot of people don't like me because I speak what's on my mind. Well, there's a reason why I still keep giving you. Well, first of all, I, I you are a friend, so I give you calls anyway. But I I value your your. Uh, your opinion on things, bro. And, and, you know, like paintball is not a place where we can mess around and be like, Oh, we got to keep everything vanilla. No, nah, we got to poke the bear occasionally, man. We got to tell people like, Hey, you know, like this is, you got, let's make people care. So, and you, and you're good at yeah. that, Todd, all, you've been good at that for 25 years. <laughs> so, you know, you're one of my favorites on we that. Need Joey's too. podcast you know back. <laughs> yeah, Dude. For real. Yeah. Joey, you need oh, to get a podcast. Again? I can't say what's anymore. It was real talk. I can't I can't say words anymore though because they're not politically correct. And the woke me people came after me and were like, "Yo, you got to not do that." Plus, my kids learned how to Google, and they were at school googling my name, and one of those came up. So I had to pull all those down. I oh, said way too much offensive nice. shit for my kids' religious school. I was like, "This shit's got to go. It's got to go." Oh uh, yeah. Well, all of all of our kids go to religious schools apparently. So like, I know Todd's yeah. does for sure. Anyway, wait. I gotta, we gotta get Pat in here because uh, we gotta get to Steven as well too, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. I can't wait for Vegas. This is gonna be awesome. Obviously, we're gonna, you know, watch this battle go down. Chicago aftershock. What are, what, what do they get? What do they got, man? First event, brand new team. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point, to be honest with, uh, with Shock, because Todd, I mean, you guys have five events to work with. You could blow out at the first one. No one's really gonna care. Get it back in the next one. But I think that Shock has a legit chance to do really well at this first one the guys that are your player the 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 linchpin players the people that are at the you know the very specific junction of what is or is not success those guys have been there before and they've and they've done this in 
in a in in a place where they no one thought they could do it and so they are very comfortable in that position so for a typical superstar team i'm always going to be like oh, i'll give them a couple events they'll be fine we can't expect anything out of them out of the first couple events a la ac diesel but maybe a little bit more pressure pressure for the guys on on shock because well you know i mean there's a decent amount of dudes on that team that rolled to vegas in 2020 an event no one thought they had any business winning and they won that event so uh you know obviously i mean sure joey would be like he's frowning right now looking at me being like maddie what the hell are you talking about but you know i think they got a chance anyway but uh, guys i appreciate it so much <laughs> i appreciate you guys so much uh last thoughts before i let you go todd can shock win the first event yes or no absolutely absolutely expectations are super high uh we don't play this game to take anything less than first everybody's committed you know we're focused on winning and that's our mindset so we're ready to go uh we're gonna give it everything we got play like champions and you know whoever stands in the way that you know we're gonna play the best game that we could possibly play joey we know that damage obviously has a chance to win the first event do you think shock or diesel even has a chance to uh, has an ability to win the first event the ability i mean if like our plane crashes and no one on damage makes it sure but <laughs> if we're there then no they don't like we're gonna win the tournament no Shadama has spoken. Joe Joey Shadama has spoken, and we will win the 2024 Vegas event. And I'll go to the to the summit award ceremony. And I know Skinny's gonna win coach of the year, and I'm fine with it, but I'm gonna hold up my trophy and say you're still a loser. That was last year. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I always appreciate you guys uh, as friends and as human beings and as paintball coaches because we need leading lights to continue to do what they do, which is push this forward. And you guys are definitely doing that for your squad. So can't wait to see what the first event's going to bring. We got a brand new season going down. Um, yeah, man, you guys are uh, you guys are the tip of the spear. So keep, continue to do exactly what you're doing, man. All right, so we got Pat McKenna Thank in you. the house. Pat, how you doing, bud? Good, Maddie. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's a great combo with uh, two people you're very familiar with, Joey Blute and Coach of Tampa Bay, team you're familiar with, and then Houston Heat, team that yeah. you're familiar with. And then, uh, and then you know, now Todd going to coach Chicago Aftershock. I mean, you and I, at, at some point, we're going to jump on a show and have a long conversation with, about all these different things because you've been around for so long. I don't think a lot of people know how long you have been around in this sport, but uh, – but yeah, but 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 specifically, but you know, we're gonna get to Steven uh in a little bit here, SVB Paintball. But dude, you have Pat McKenna is doing something. I didn't know who was doing this for a while because I'm always like, hey, we got heroes history, ongoing narrative, spectacle, we got statistics, we need to get statistics in there. And then all of a sudden somebody stepped up and started doing statistics, and I started getting tagged in all these things, and I was like, Who is doing all this badass work? And uh I just kind of let it play out a little bit. I didn't really want to like poke the bear or you know kind of see who was doing it at least to start things out but then you were like hey bro let's let's get a let's get a lunch you know you were in san diego that you're like let's get a lunch and i'm like yeah dude who is this like who would i be meeting with and then you're like it's pat mckenna and i was like oh pat what up dog i was like yeah let's yeah if, if it all works out for our families then yeah let's do it uh unfortunately we weren't able to do it uh because the schedules just didn't mix but but the second that you were like it was you i'm like oh, okay this makes a lot of sense so let's dive into this real quick. Um, what was, my, I think my first question is, you know, and I'm, you know, everyone knows how much of a, I'm just a huge fanboy over the stats situation. I've just have been so hard to do it over the years. And, and, and I, I do, we, I feel like we do need to have a longer conversation about this at some point, but I just want to let at this point, because, you know, it's the pre-show for the big event coming up. I just want to let people know what you've been doing, where to find it, and then highlight a couple of the metrics that you have been capturing for this long period of time that you're now highlighting in these these things that you've been putting out. So where was the impetus for this? Where's the, the origin story for this? And then and what are you trying to create? Well, Maddie, thank you first for having me on the show. Thank you to Ghost Sports for like bringing paintball to the uh, to the forefront, you know, especially people out there that don't get to see it. Uh, I think Go Sports is a great way for non paintball people to connect, like friends and family, if you want to see what we do on the weekends when nobody else is around. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. where the stats came from pretty much was uh, I've been coaching in the league for nine years now. I started taking stats in 2015. I felt like there was a way to be able to use those numbers to more effectively coach teams. Um, 
and it started first out on like pen and paper, like almost all of us do. Like Joey is notorious for it. Skinny, I really don't know what he writes on his paper, but he's always up there jotting some type of notes down. Um, and I figured out that it would be easier if we could put it into a digital format that we could be able to distribute to the players or to the teams a little bit faster. And it just continually evolved until we got to the point we are today. Um, I know we spoke about this, uh, you know, on the phone, but I probably have about a terabyte of data. I have every point from 2015 Insane. until today um, that I've just kept and used uh, for coaching purposes. In the last two years, I was lucky enough to be on the team with Houston Heat with Todd. It was amazing. We had a great time. Um, you know, we came up short, but um, we definitely uh, definitely enjoy using the, the stats to help push us a little bit farther ahead. So when I uh, when that came to an end, I decided to go ahead and just start releasing this. Um, I, uh, you can easily tell who my friends are, uh, cause I started with all of them, uh, as we, we started, uh, releasing this stuff and we've just continued to expand it. And then I've had people that have joined my team to help this become a reality and to continually bring this stuff on a pretty regular basis. Our goal is five posts a week. Um, we're a little short right now because of the event coming up, but, um, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming here in the future. Yeah. So I think that it's like, okay, what's coming on in the future. But I, but again, at some point in time, we're going to have a longer conversation about this, but I just, uh, I want to let people know that the things that you have been isolating and kind of bringing to light, because, you know, when you do look at, at, at paintball itself and you have, you know, the spectacle and the amazing thing that is these guys in this crazy gunfight and then, you know, the, and, and the story we're trying to keep along and the heroes and you go back into the history and all these different elements, as I'm always talking about, but one of the hardest things to get is the statistics. And so you guys have decided to start doing these statistics and you started releasing them and with the guy's signatures on it. And I was like, what, like, who is doing this? What is this? Who is like, what's behind this? And then it, it came out that it was you. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, and I, I just, it, it's just one of those things that it, the more of that that exists, the more we're getting fodder and to the, to the people, the fans and the people that love this, and it gives people that have can have a conversation because you know, like you and I spoke about off camera when we were discussing, you know, this show, it was like, okay, I'm a baseball fan. Cause I, you know, grew up Padres fan and I, I just a sports fan in general of all sports, but you know, definitely grew up, uh, play baseball a lot. And Tony Gwynn, San Diego Padre, one of the best ever first bout hall of famer, RIP, re God rest his soul. But you know, he could have gone, I think it was like, Oh, four, 1400 in his last at bats and still been a career 300 hitter which is how, which is like a, one of those statistics you could throw out there to talk about how amazing he was at this thing. And without stats, you don't have that, you know? So before we kind of jump in and I'm, I don't know, do, I'm not sure if we were able to get um, some of these graphics, but you know, we were trying to highlight and we could do it without the graphics, but you know, we're trying to hi highlight Chris Shear and Jacob Edwards. Cause I was asking you, I'm like, Hey yes. man, we got you, you, you have all these metrics for all these different guys. Like, who do you think we should put the spotlight on? There they are. So let's just jump into this and maybe you could talk me through. And I, and I think this is a good point that you were talking about in this situation. It was like, you have these guys' signatures on these and that's like a, almost a signature of approval in a, in a way that it was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm taking these guys stats. We got these stats because stats and paintball is a, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing to get accurate. And, and, but you know, you're putting, you're giving these guys their stats and then they send you their signature basically saying like, I sign off on this. And so talk me through these metrics. You got points played and, and, uh, and these different metrics, and I'd rather let you describe it. So what do we got here? What are we looking at? Okay. Yeah. So I'm really glad you talked about the signature thing real quick. Uh, yeah, that was definitely one of the biggest things was to bring, connect the player to the information that's being provided to the consumer. Um, so that was huge for us. And I really thank everybody that has gone out of their way. I think about 60% of the league has now voluntarily sent me their stuff without me having to ask anymore. Um, so that's been cool, but going down and, um, walking through these. Okay. So this is a lot of the stuff that co that pro coaches. So like, this is uh, for everybody out there that is wondering what coaches are looking at. Like when Joey was talking about, I know Tyler is going to go to the can, you know, X amount of times and I'm going to try to shoot him. This is, this is what the, this is what we look for. So on here we have points played, which is how many points they played. Um, this just covers the prelims of world cup. Um, it's a little deceptive obviously because both, uh, damage and dynasty were in the champions bracket with us in the Tontons. So we only played three games compared to everybody else that played four. 
Um, next up, you have the win percentage. So the win percentage is did they win that point? Why the um, why they were on the field? We have point survival. So did they survive to the end of the point that they won? Uh, we have breakout survival, which I want to touch on Jacob here in a second about that. And then we have the bunkers played on the break. And then we have where they played the most. And this is probably the most accurate information that can be provided without an opinion being created. So that was one of the things when we, we decided to do this, because there is other metrics that we have. We wanted to go something that was more um, standardized that couldn't be a huge arguing point. I mean, I want people to debate between who's better, Jacob or Chris, but I don't want them to debate like, did they go to that bunker or not go to that bunker? Did they shoot this guy or not shoot that guy? Which is the holy grail is obviously getting the shot and who eliminated who, but that is a, uh, I think we're a little bit away from getting a very accurate yeah. setup there. Very, very difficult metric to achieve for sure. Yes. So, so looking at these, okay, so these are both D side players, both MVP caliber players. These guys have both won MVPs. They've both been incredibly. So Chris Shear, San Diego dynasty, they've won four, four world cups in a row. Chris Shear came over a couple years ago and he became the replacement for Dalton Vanderbilt on that D side. And he has been miraculous. This dude has been a stud over there for San Diego dynasty. Jacob Edwards was a phenom coming up at you know, 15, 16 years old. He's, he, that's how long he's been doing this. And it, it's been a long road for him, but he's been such a big hero for Tampa Bay. He's won two, uh, you know, victories essentially for them in one-on-ones in double overtime. And, you know, so Tampa Bay has won three events in the past two years, but two of them were because Jacob Edwards was able to win one-on-ones. Now that's not obviously the only contributions that, that Jacob Edwards is having out there as these statistics show, but it is kind of interesting when you kind of start comparing and contrasting these two D side studs and for two, you know, the, dynasty number one ranked overall, uh, yes. Tampa Bay damage number two ranked overall. So this is a great comparison. So as far as, you know, driving the conversation when you're, if you, if you were, if a fan's looking at this and they're like, how do I look at this? How, do, how do I decipher this to, to, you know, make give me more information about the the excellence that is being displayed by a Chris Shearer or Jacob Edwards. Where would you point them to? You know, like where should people be? You know, putting their gaze when it comes to these statistics that you guys are trying to bring. So, um, or, actually, or are bringing. I don't. Yeah. So I don't know if we do. We have the other image that we have. Um. Yes. Okay, so that's why we did this, Maddie. This shows where their people are, where they're playing, their effectiveness in each bunker, and how what they're contributing on the field, which is which is the only thing that we can really control um, at the beginning of a point. As a point goes, it just be there's so many variables. Whether it's five on five, five on four, three on five, um, it just kind of gets wild. But this is the best um, demonstration that I think we can give to the general public. So they can take these numbers and then apply them to a visual, which the visual is the bunker played. Yeah. And, and, and so break this visual down a little bit again, you know, I, I, we're going to do a longer bit about this, Pat. I love what you're doing here. Statistics are a giant part of what we're trying to accomplish with this mandate of making people care and, and putting things out in the world and, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, because we are a little succinct on time because um, I want to get Steven in here a little bit to talk about some moves um, from World Cup with some of the stuff he's been doing for us. But you, uh, you so you kind of look at this. You got Chris Sheer and you got Jacob Edwards. You know, Jacob, his is a little bit more. Um, he, he was playing a, a couple of the same spots, at least to start out with. And I see a little bit more on the heat map over here for Chris Shear. Talk to me about this, this graphic. And, it, you know, if people tune in like what they're going to be seeing, you know, uh, with uh, with okay. stats. Yeah, so what you're going to be looking at is at each bunker that's highlighted, the white percentage is um, where they went on the break. The orange percentage above it is their win percentage for that bunker. So we have individual win percentage for that individual bunker, like winning the entire game. So it actually gives you an effectiveness where they where they would be the most effective player at. Um, then you have, um, do they live on the break, which is green? And then above that, you have, do you have your gun up on the break? Okay. Um, and then I think also the question that I had the same question too, which we talked a little bit about and, you know, you can say what you would like, but I, it's like, what is the, you know, like, where are you guys going with this? You know, I mean, what, obviously this is an amazing thing for paintball. The fact that we have these metrics that you guys are bringing out, like, are you working with teams? You working with players? Like, wh where are we at with that? 
Uh, so we're currently, um, we are working with some teams out there uh, this season. Um, we're actually going to have a staff at every event. Um, we're going to be taking all of these stats for the pro division. And then we'll be putting out content in between the um, events to try to build um, that story for what happened to what's going to happen, right? So you can look at all this information and we can look at Jacob and Chris here and we say, hey, these guys are super effective. Here's what they did. Here's how well they won. Um, but is that going to translate into Las Vegas? And that's really what this is going to be about. It's going to be about you telling you and, and everybody out there that does the podcast telling this story and then using these statistics to figure out, is this going to be a continuing trend or is this just a one hit wonder situation? Now, obviously, Chris and, and Jake here, I would I would say they're going to be a continuing trend, but um, <laughs> For you know, sure. some players may have a phenomenal <laughs> event and some of players may not. Um, it just gives us something else to talk about and debate who really is the best, right? Um, you know, we talked about this off air and I don't have we're not, his stats obviously up here, but like I think people would be really surprised who the most effective player on Dynasty was who won the event, you know, and it was Arturo. Arturo had the highest win percentage out of everybody. And we have something special coming for him that we're actually going to be putting out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, same with Marcel since he got the MVP. And that's what we want it to be debate. When you guys pick the MVP for World Cup, Marcelo had phenomenal situations that he was able to pull out and really rise to a different level. But statistically, he wasn't at the top of his team. So we get to have these conversations. Do the stats really matter in the end? Or is it those moments of heroics that are actually going to define the player in their long term in the league? It, it is interesting because how we have to do with that MVP situation. So it, it, it is kind of tough and it's tough for me because I kind of have to make that that decision. Um, I, I always if it's if it's questionable, then I will always go check in with the with the coach and a couple other, you know, I'll ask my co hosts I'll ask a couple other people as things are kind of getting to that moment, but we have to make that decision on the fly, you know, because we don't, we don't oh, have yeah. the ability to go back. I can't go back and watch all the tape. I would love to, I mean, it would be great if I could go back and watch the tape and look at the stats, but for the most part, you're kind of just going off of, you know, who made the biggest, you know, who was the, again, you know, the, the award is most valuable player. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. If you are the statistical leader, you are in the discussion. And and so and that was kind of the question. It was like, is it going to be Arturo or is it going to be Marcelo? And but this, but that's you know, what, but this I, is what we need in paintball, right? We need to have the conversation. 100%. We need to be talking yeah, about it. Sure. We need to be able to do it. I, sure. I think Marcelo was the MVP of World Cup. I'm I'm not discrediting that. But it's just like from when you start looking at all the different points, you can have conversation about it. And that's what paintball needs is they need in my opinion, they need the stats to help build on top of the story, just like the five fingers of the fist that you talk about all the time. And that's huge because that just gives us another point to bring forward and to show people how great this game is and how much like the the obsession that we have personally, how it can be distributed to the public. I mean, I love paintball. Totally. I think it's one of the greatest no, sports I'm, ever been. Yeah. it's it, And I just got to, again, tip my hat and respect that you have stepped up and, and started to do this. It does dovetail in with what you've been doing for so long with a lot of these different teams. Um, but yeah, I, I wish that I could have had some of these statistics when I had to be making these decisions. Um, even though I, I so, you know, can, to me, I, I always elevate the moments because if you, yes. if what you did, if, if your team won because of what you did, even if you didn't have the best statistical run, like I could have saw all the stats for Arturo, but, but but again, Arturo did all that work. But if, if Marcelo doesn't pull off the moves that he does, which we're about to talk about with Steven in a second, so this this is kind of perfect as a bookend, um, then then they don't win the tournament, man. So it's like if that's you don't right. if if you don't have somebody actually do the thing that wins you the tournament, and that's why that's kind of my always my my trump card in these situations when I'm like, okay, cool, you can, again, and because Skinny wanted to give, and and sometimes I have to be careful when I go to these coaches because they're gonna want to give it a guy an award that's going to help their team, you know, that's going to give them, yeah. you know, that's going to boost the, you know, I give this guy this award or this or that. And, and sometimes it's very close and it, it's been, that's like, I mean, I could do a whole mini series on, you know, dynasties MVP awards <laughs> over the years. Um, but, uh, over the past four years, um, but that being said, I always gravitate towards, because I think this is the most important thing in the world is that if Marcelo doesn't do the things that he did, in the Tauntauns and that last game against Impact, they don't win. So 
I mean, 100%. it doesn't, you could have shot everyone. It, any, it could have literally been anybody. It could have been Blake literally shot five dudes a game to get him to the finals. But if, you know, but if Marcelo doesn't shoot those guys when he shoots them, then they don't, they don't win, they don't win the world cup, you know? So it's like, okay, well, we have, to, we have to give, it's like, what's again, what's valuable out there. Well, yes, consistency and killing and, you know, lethality and survivability, all these certain metrics are absolutely fundamental. But if you don't have that dude that actually steps up in that pressure situation, in a low, low body moment, you know, then you you guys are going home losers. And so it's like, at the yeah. end of the day, that's kind of why we elevate those people. But still that being said, it's, it, is that I, man, cause sometimes it's so close, you know, a couple of years ago, it was Blake and Marcelo that shared the, the MVP. And if I had stats on it, it would have been a, a little bit, maybe it'd been, it'd been easier to just say, you know what? Okay. Well, if you look at these statistics, well, we have to weight it towards this guy. So his, you know, survivability was this, he was more proactive. He, you know, was his winning percentage was bigger, whatever it may be, but they just had enough big moments where we're like, well, man, it's, it would be kind of a dick move to just give it to one of them. So we haven't done this before, but let's just give it to both anyway. But, um, before I let you go, where can people find what you're doing and what's the future for what you, what you guys got going on right now? Uh, you guys can find us. Uh, we're exclusively on Instagram. It's paintball underscore stats. Um, that's our, our our platform we've chose the, to do. A um, couple of things that we have that are coming out soon here is we have a evaluation system that's coming out using statistics to evaluate teams after the event to give them like an A through D rating, but it'll be based on a percentage. And then lastly, um, I know we didn't talk about this, so uh, but I wanted to announce that we actually will we actually have. Uh, got another team member and we will be doing the WNXL in Vegas. Oh, cool. Yes. I mean, I'm, I don't know. It, it is interesting to me that we have, you know, most recently brought in an entire other half of humanity to do this and it's yeah. paintball. So I've always been a big believer that the gun is the great equalizer. So um, seeing it done on the WNXL side of things is, is awesome too. So I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that you guys are doing that and I can't wait to see kind of what the future holds for that and, and who rises yeah, up. We're from that side of things. Yeah, we're very excited because you think like uh, most of the players in the uh, in the uh, the major league side, right? Uh, how long has the average player been in now? 12 years, like top guys, 12, 13 years. So I'm actually really excited about the WNXL stats because we don't know who the best is, right? We have an idea no, we don't. based on popularity. It's evolving. But we don't actually yeah. know who, yeah. It's like, so like, I'm really excited about that. Um, and I've got a really good team with me um, and uh, we're excited about Vegas and what the future holds. And we'll see where this goes. If you're interested in getting involved in paintball stats, um, DM us on our Instagram. Um, quick shout out to my staff, um, San Monville, Anthony Tran, uh, Zach Stewart and Alyssa Stewart. Um, and my wife, Lindsay, uh, definitely a key to make this all happen. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much for what you're doing for the sport. I really appreciate it. And I'm really look looking forward to what obviously I have to keep touching base because the, uh, the metrics that you are providing, I think are fundamental. You know, we, we, that's just of the, of the important things that, that you give to the world that make people care statistics, especially with paintball, no one's getting knocked unconscious. We're not like we had talked about, you know, no one's doing backflips on motorcycles, you know, no one's hitting yeah. a, a baseball 500 yard. Like we, we have the statistics help clarify excellence. And the excellence is what we're trying to seek and highlight. And, and, and so having that there is, is, is fundamental and super cool. Your dog obviously also agrees. So I'm stoked about, uh, yeah, about I pup, he's you know been asleep the whole time and just <laughs> took off for some reason. I don't know what he's going. So no, it's all good. Hey dude, Pat, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. We'll keep it going. Um, yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep touching base with you. Looking forward to seeing uh, the metrics from event number one. Um, okay. So we got, uh, we got Steven, uh, Peterson coming in here from SVP paintball. Steven, thank you so much for waiting. I appreciate it, buddy. I know you got a family and, and I love what you've been doing here for go sports and I, I, people don't know. Also got to let everybody know. Everyone was like, Hey dude, Maddie, the telestration is absolutely crushing it for cup. That was a game changer. That's Steven. This is Steven Peterson. This is the guy that's been doing that behind the scenes for us. He's going to be there in Vegas for us. And so this was the guy, cause it's very difficult, you know, because it's evolving very quickly and it's a live system. And I, I, I mean, I I've messed around with the telestration over the years and tried to do it live, but it's so hard with paintball. Cause it's like, here's our live feed. Here's what everyone sees at home. Here's what's happening on the field. Everything's popping off real quick. 
And to be able to like, I just, that's not something I can do with what I need to do. And so you just stepped into that role and did it absolutely amazing. And so, you know, one of the big, you know, as I, I love, I love the word for, force multiplier because it was one of those situations where it was really truly a force multiplier for us to get people to care, which is what I, um, I'm, I will die on this hill. Like we have to give people a reason to care and what you were doing for us and you're going to continue to do it in 2024 with us with the telestration is awesome but you also you got svp paintball you've been doing some really cool content for us and uh i was i'm hoping we were able to rack up um some of these games but anyway that was my let me just give steven his props because you deserve it because so many people <laughs> were like maddie go sports you guys are killing it with the telestration i was like yeah this was our boy Steven, and he was in the in the grind, like just 10 hours a day, just <laughs> doing this every single game, like as much as he possibly could to, to make it accurate. And and we were having constant, you know, meetings, and you know, I was on the fly. So I'm like, yeah, let's we get those numbers up every single time and we could do this. It was it was a very much evolving thing, but that's how the, that's how we change the game. That's how we do things. So do props to you, you know. So um, so before we kind of dive into some of the stuff that you've been doing for Ghost Sports and what you do with SVP Paintball. You know, just give me your thoughts on 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 what that experience was at Cup. It was a five day crazy adventure. You did your telestration the whole time. You're locked in the pocket, just literally doing this. You know, all day long. How was that for you? Must have been kind of gnarly. I'm guessing. Yeah, it was. It was fun. It was like being thrown into the the dog pit, really. But um, I don't know, man. I I I I loved living in Maddie's world and everybody thinking it was you. It was actually pretty great. <laughs> But uh, no, it was, I appreciate all the all the kind words that people have had to say, um, you know, especially those who got it through Go Sports or through you and, and sharing that information. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback, uh, a lot of good constructive criticism. Um, and I know we've talked about this, um, you know, we talked about this at the event, but um, it was really cool to hear how digestible it made the games uh, to see where people were looking or the positions that people were holding. Um, because really that's what, that's what I hope that we make this sport into is just more digestible to make it more accessible to people. Um, I mean, my wife told me like, wow, that was like the first time I really understood what was going on, especially when you get those long points, those hold points where you're just not really sure why people aren't moving anymore. Um, for those who that's aren't it. as familiar, especially if you've not played the layout, you know? And so it's really helpful to, uh, to diagram that and to see exactly what's going on and where people are looking. So it was fun. It was definitely on the fly. Uh, it was something that we had to learn pretty quickly, but it, I think it worked out really well. I think it did. We had that meeting before and, uh, you know, I know we got to, you know, I could probably talk for hours about it, but it, it was, it was funny. Cause we had the, you know, we were like, all right, here's what we're trying to get. All right, let's, here's our technical capabilities. Here are the, the different things that, you know, were possible. Um, and, uh, and you just knocked it out of the park, bro. Like you just knocked it out of the park, but this is where I keep, I keep trying to tell people, it's like, Hey guys, if you're out there, you're listening and you, you, you feel like you have something to contribute, you know, bring us what you got, you know, because, you know, like Steven, the stuff you've done, I just want to, I'm, 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 I'm constantly looking around and being like, okay, well, we're, you know, we're, we're hacking our way through the jungle of, 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 uh, of attention of people trying to get people to care. And it's really difficult. And the people that are that have a different insight or the ability to do some work, it's like I'm like, yeah, man. Like, and I always joke, I'm like, here's a dull machete and a dim torch. We, we were going this way for a while, <laughs> you know. So if you could, just, if you want to join in, brother, I'm, I'm, I, re we really could use the help. And you've definitely been one of those guys. And you've also done some really cool stuff. And you know, go check out some of the stuff that Steven's done on uh, on Go Sports. If you're listening to this and you haven't uh, seen it yet, you know, log off, go back, watch this, go check out his stuff. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I don't, I don't know if we were able to rack up the, some of these clips, but you know, I, I just, I love a good analyst, you know, and, and it's, and I think that a good analyst and maybe you also, before we kind of, yeah, so here we are, but you, you know, but you, you, you know, you've done gaming at a high level, you've been playing this game for a while, but I just, I really do like how you break the game down. Even so it was like, I went to a practice just real quick before we jump into this and I'm going to let you take it brother. Like, like just go with it and we can talk about it, but. Like I want people to to hear what you have to say about the game. Good analysts are 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 awesome. Marcelo Morgat at the first practice we went to is is uh, Ironman uh, aftermath and Dynasty, and he was like, "Maddie, we got we need like like you know obviously me and him go way back." And he's like, "You know we need we need some analysts that can do some other stuff." And 
you know, they, they can like, you can't do it all. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah of course, brother. Like, yeah. I, I, it's, I, I don't want to do it all. And, and so he's, and then, so, but he didn't see the stuff that you had done. And then the next week he texts me and he's like, dude, the stuff that Steven did was awesome. You know? So, so we are obviously highlighting a Marcella Margot situation here, three to three, two twenty three left on the clock, uh, Tauntauns, you know, trying to punch dynasty and to get to a situation where they can win a fourth world cup. Um, so yeah, obviously, you know, you're, you're going to talk really good, you know, say really good things about Marcelo, but this is the, the type of stuff we're going to try to continue to bring in 2024. And I just really love the stuff you've been doing, bro. So talk me through this and, and you're, you know, what, what are you thinking when you're looking at these and as an analyst perspective? Sure. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, it was, I, like I mentioned to you, I had the chance to talk to him on an airplane ride back home to Utah of all places. And told him that I had I had done the telestrations and he just absolutely loved it. But so uh, like you said, uh, 3v3 situation in the semifinals, Dynasty be uh, against the Tauntauns. Dynasty, oh, actually, I believe it's, uh, I'm, I'm misremembering this. Uh, I, play, the pl play the clip a little bit here forward. Uh, they're in a hold position. This is a must win point for both teams. But as you see on the left side of your screen, go ahead and pause it here for a second. Marcelo moves from the snake side can Snakes to the snake side insert bunker and now just behind Archie. And in a typical situation like this, you would see, you know, the support player kind of getting their player down the field, their attacker down the field. So right now we have a standoff between uh, Axel Gauden and, and Archie Montemayor. But Archie was trying to find the bodies. He couldn't really see what was going on. You can see him doing his over-the-top move that we all see him do. But it was very surprising to see Marcelo push past Archie. And because this is an unconventional strategy, right? It's now these two are swapping roles. Archie now has to play the support position because Marcelo's head's down as he's crawling to make this, this game opening uh, play. So he gets a little quiet. He's still crawling. He's trying to find exactly where Ar uh, Axel's looking because they know that he's in this position, as you can see in the middle of the field. I believe that's Ryan Greenspan starting to get tricky to try and find him. But what you'll see here in just a second as you keep playing the clip, Marcelo gets all the way to their snake side and just posts up. And as he does so, this point breaks open just immediately. Go ahead and pause it right here if you can. So... Axel actually comes out on the outside of his bunker and shoots Archie, which had Marcelo not pushed this position, they would have given up all of their field positioning and Axel, Axel well, still would have been alive. Well, and Steven, just to add to what you're saying, I mean, it, what you could also see in that from like a high level paintball perspective is that is that, you know, is, and this is why it just, you know, people beat Marcelo up a little bit. Oh, he's too defensive and the defensive player of the year, this. And, but this, if you want to be an elite defensive quote unquote player, you have to be able to be offensive and finish games. And so when he gets into that spot, the reason why he was able to get this kill on Axel, when you go back and watch this is that he heard, he, he put himself in that good spot, but he's being very attentive as to, as to what is happening in front of him. And the second that he hears the gun, he hears the gun and he's like, Oh, Oh, Axel's, he knows exactly where he is. He knows the situation. And then he gets that kill. So you know, because we we see time and time again, the guys will, will will crawl into this position and they will just refuse to take the incoming information that the world is giving them gun shooting, people talking, the bunker moving, whatever. And they get so tunnel vision into that moment. And but this is just that high level. I mean, you know, Marcel or Marcelo, I, you know, he wrote this book called Paintball IQ and it's like it's great. It's so so fitting considering how his, you know, the, his tra the trajectory of his career is gone. Because this is just a very high level paintball IQ situation as we play it out. So yeah, talk me through the rest of this one. Yeah, absolutely. I highly recommend reading that. That was one of the first things that I read when I was starting to you know, push up the uh, upper divisions of paintball. So highly recommend that book, by the way. But yes, yeah, so Marcelo gets here, posts up on Axel, surprises him and shoots him out of his bunker. And immediately with like, I think his first ball shoots uh, his name is, I'm, I'm forgetting his name now, the Columbo out of the snake can yeah, and instantly closes out the point. So like, obviously there's lots of conversations about, you know, Ryan Greenspan being one of the greatest players of all time. He certainly is I, like, I want to hear Marcelo's name more because this man si almost single-handedly, like, it's not to say that the other players being alive on the field were not a huge contributing factor to them making it this far. But the fact that this man put his entire team on his back to say, okay, Archie, if you're not going to push this guy, then I'm going to, because as you even identified in the live stream at the time, 
the play was for Archie to go run down Axel. Like he had to go do that. Yeah. And he didn't have to necessarily go run out on the outside of it, out of the out of the brick. He could have done the exact same thing that Marcelo was doing. And certainly it is risky, right? Having two players there is actually a good thing for Dynasty because if one dies, the other one's immediately there to fill that that spot. But the play was to pluck out Axel. He had to he had to die in this situation. So Mar Marcelo's sitting there, he's chatting. I'm sure they communicated that he was on his way, but the fact that he just said, you know what, if this isn't going to happen, I'm going to go do it, gets to this spot, posts up, literally got them into the finals. This play single-handedly secured their position into the finals, and it was excellent. Yeah, I, I mean, Stephen, I, I really couldn't agree more. You know, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, Marcelo's going to be a first bout Hall of Famer. He's going to get one of those <laughs> jackets that we, that we got last year. We're going to inaugurate another group of uh hall of famers uh in vegas but whenever he decides to hang it up like he's it's just it will be a no doubter when i get that voting sheet i'm gonna be like yeah dude this one this is like the <laughs> easiest decision i've ever had to make in my entire life um just based on the bulk of his work throughout the years but what i love about these certain guys that, and how they've got at, at, at certain people over the years you know again the greenspans right it's like ryan if, even if ryan finished playing five years ago I still would have voted for him to be a first bat Hall of Famer, but the fact that he's 42 now and still out there as good as he is, yeah. and 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 then Marcelo's getting a little long in the tooth now. He's still a, a kid compared to uh, some of these <laughs> other guys, but you know, like he's into his 30s now. He's like mid to early 30s, and I joke with him all the time because he does look young, and I'm like, oh yeah, Marcelo, congratulations, happy 25th birthday. But uh, <laughs> But the thing is, is that, it, but his execution, he keeps doing this. You know, he keeps being that guy that is the, you know, because people, some people hate the, the the term clutch. You know, they they don't mm -hmm. like that term for whatever reason, because it, it is a fungible term. It, it's something that's not, you know, it, uh, you know, it's like I, we just had Pat McKenna on and I was talking to him off uh, camera and we were discussing certain elements of paintball statistics where, you know, could you have an error? Could you have certain, a game breaker, all these different metrics? Well, it's like, what's the definition of that? Well, clutch is a very subjective thing, right? But when you do look at um, at Marcelo's body of work and why he's been, you know, a guy that any team, like Marcelo every year gets offers. Every year. Like every year, whoever has money is trying to go after Marcelo. And he hasn't left. So he he understands that he has a good thing going with Dynasty. and And it could be financially beneficial for him to take a, 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 you know, offer from, you know, the saints or whoever it may be, whatever, you know, going back years and then every, but it's like, it's Marcelo dude. Like people recognize greatness because he keeps pulling stuff off, like pulling things like this in big, these big moments uh, to kind of almost where, yeah. Okay. Well, what does clutch mean? Well, if we're talking about paintball, as we move forward at a certain point, if he keeps doing this, I'm going to have to be like, well, just go look up Marcelo Margot. And that's clutch, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's getting to that point. Okay. So now we're heading into a situation where now there's 45 seconds left. It's two to two. We're in the finals. It's impact versus dynasty. So he just had that big heroic moment to even get dynasty to this point. You know, and we just had Pat talking about how statistically uh, Arturo was a better player in the prelims, especially in the prelims um, than Marcelo was. But, you know, it's like you can rake in, in the preseason, and then get to the postseason and, you know, baseball uh, analogy and hit, you know, 200. And then all of a sudden a dude hits 450 and with three jacks and like wins games for you. And it's like, that's just sports, bro. You know, like, again, it, yep. like, what are you doing to help us win the championship? But everyone contributes. So obviously, you know, Arturo was lights out at, at Cup and, and, and tip in the hat respect to Arturo. I told him this at the event. I said it to him at the first event or the first practice when I saw him, I'll say to him this weekend, you know, I see him up in Sacramento, but you know, but, but Marcelo's winning these big moments. So, okay. So Steven paint the picture for me. What do we got going on here? Awesome. Sure. So before we play it, actually, let's keep it paused for a second. Cause I just want to, I just want to bring your attention to a few things. Now I know you watched this live and I actually talk about this in great detail in a video that's coming out uh, with go sports uh, sometime in the near future, hopefully soon. But um, there is so much chaos. Like you said, 45 seconds, the two, two match that will determine really possibly who will win this event. They're not in overtime yet, but there's just, there's so much going on here, or perhaps they're in overtime. I may be forgetting this. I've watched so many games recently, but in any case, whoever wins this point is going to win the event. 
So, Marcelo right now is on the right side of your screen at the Snake Tower, the Landry Logistics Bunker. He's at the number two position. Everybody else is posted up, and they are gridlocked trying to hold out the point. Now, there was some questions as to if this was going to go to full time, if we were going to go to 0-0. But as you'll see in just a second, I, I played, the, I had the clip start a bit early, so go ahead and play it for us here. Um, we're going to see this huge offense coming from Impact as we start to see Big pressure coming up through the middle and lots of stuff happening. Arturo pushes up to the wedge and gets eliminated right after. And now I believe that's Trevor Reeser in the center wedge and Matt Jackson pushing the snake side wedge. So let's pause it for just a second. Pause it for just a second if we can. Maybe roll it back here. Um, so there's so much that happened. It's it, You can miss it if you're not paying attention. So right now we have Tyler. I think his name's Penilio. I've heard you say it, Pen, Penilio. But in any I, case... I believe it's uh, Penilio. Penelio, thank Penilio. you. So, so Tyler Penelio is in the Dorito 3 on the left side of your screen. Uh, I believe it's Ryan Greenspan in the Dorito 1 on the right side of your screen. And we have uh, Trevor Reeser pushing the middle. So <laughs> Ryan Greenspan shooting towards the inside of the field just as Trevor Reeser pushes the middle. He shoots Trevor Reeser at the exact same time that he gets shot by Tyler Penelio. So Tyler's now alone, but Ryan's gone. Trevor Reese has gone and now it's Matt Jackson. And if you didn't pay attention, Marcelo's now in the back center. Okay. The only person that saw Marcelo make that move was Trevor Reeser, who now just died with that information. And obviously there's no way you could really convey that as quickly. Like you're, it's happening all at once. Right. But Matt yeah. Jackson's gun is pointed towards the snake tower. And even though it's like the same gap, it's the same angle, right? He shoots paint there. He hits Marcelo. He Marcelo's over the top of his bunker. He's not on the same side as what as the as the tall tower would be. So he's over the top and he's already shooting his paint as Matt Jackson's coming through that gap. So, I mean, fortunately for Marcelo, you can see in the in the replay, I didn't provide this this uh, this clip, but you can see in the replay on the broadcast that Marcelo did see Trevor get to that bunker, but then he notes that he walks off the field. Just so much information processing in like split seconds. So he gets here. He shoots Matt Jackson as he rounds the corner. Again, you can see Matt in the bottom towards the snake side. He doesn't know where Marcelo is. As soon as he shoots him, now it's a 1v1, but Tyler Penlilio doesn't know that yet. So, and perhaps, or perhaps he does, but the, I don't think he knew that Arturo died, and he certainly doesn't know that Marcelo's in the back center, right? So I know that, Ty, I'm pretty sure, I should say, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Tyler still knew that there was at least a body left alive, but he pro he knew that it was somewhere on the snakish side of the field, but he did not see Marcelo a retreat because as he's passing the 50 Dorito, he can't see Marcelo. So Marcelo makes this probably the single most, I said this before, I'll, I said it in the video, probably the single most important tactical retreat in any paintball match I've ever watched. Um, there might be some others that, that you could argue are just as influential, but I mean, this is the finals of the World Cup to make history for these guys. That retreat was so high level, so intelligent. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you could, I I'm sure we could pick his brain on that single move and why he decided to make it. And it might even be, oh, well, I just, I would felt like I was in danger and I had to move back. I'm sure it's more than that, but it, it was unbelievable. Incredible move by, move by Marcelo. I've, I've watched this guy for years. I've always enjoyed his performance, but this is next level. This is incredible high performance. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, bro. It, it's just, Steven, it, 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 this is, and this is why I love Marcelo. You know, good friends of Marcelo. Talked to him today. He's not stoked on the layout. Um, but it, it's, <laughs> it's one of those situations where it's like, I as a dude that played you know, our careers were similar. I came up as a front guy and then moved back. He came up as a front guy and he moved back. And I'm about 10 years older than he is, but I've known him since he was 15 years old, but he's just always been a little bit of an old soul. And, and I see these moves that he keeps doing and it, and it's, and it, but he, he takes all the criticism people give him. He turns it into greatness and he's just been this just rock solid gumption filled clutch dude that it, you just can't teach that you know i mean there's a lot of things you can teach you can we can teach all the other things but there's certain things you can't teach and he has one of those things you just you you just either got it or you don't either it develops or it doesn't and so to see him consistently yeah. year after year keep having these big moments i mean one of the reasons he got on dynasty was like he guessed it with dynasty 101 in vegas we're heading to Vegas now. This is, you know, we're talking like 10 years ago, 15 <laughs> years ago. But uh, so it, it's, 
it's just been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure to see him be in these situations throughout the years. And, 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 and he's in the prime of his life, you know? So it, I just think that, you know, Marcelo in that moment with all the accolades that he's had over the years, past few years, especially, I think there's a lot more coming for him, man. You know, I, I feel like he, he's just locked in now. Can dynasty keep it up with everyone having kids and, you know, that that's just one of those big captivating stories as we move forward. But man, Steven, thank you so much. I really appreciate you, uh, what you're doing here. And, you know, because we need analysts, you know, we need people that, that understand what they're seeing, can highlight it in a certain way and display it for people. And, and you've just been crushing it for us. And, uh, and we're going to keep doing that here in 2024, dude. So, and, and yeah, the, uh, telestration, like he's, if you want to give somebody props for the telestration, <laughs> I didn't do it. Uh, Steven was the guy that was, was, was putting that together. Um, and then big shout out to Darren Sasenia, of course, who, you know, the mastermind behind the scenes as a technical director, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to 2024. I think the last question before we sign off, bro. And I know we've had a long show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us here. We're trying to give you guys some juicy content though, but it's like, if you, so Steven, as a student of the game, if you had to pick one big, like what's your favorite storyline? that you are, you can't wait to see as we, we go into Vegas, you know, we're going to get locked in the pocket. We got three days of broadcast. You're going to be over 10 hours a day. You're going to be on the, you know, yeah. telestration. And I'm going to be like, Steve, we need more of this. We need more of that. I'm all right, let's do this or that. But as far as just as a fan, cause you're a paintball fan and I'm a paintball fan. What, what do you want to see? Hap like what, what's, what is the big gun to your head? What's the most captivating story heading into uh, Vegas 2024? Uh, well, I might upset some people by not saying Chicago aftershock, despite the fact that that's that is a what? very compelling story. What? I know. <laughs> how dare? How dare you? How dare you? No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I I know that'll be a compelling story. I'm very interested in that. Um, but for me, it's it's actually Iron Man. I'm so curious to see how that squad will perform. And it's really hard because just below that is the whole paintball fit and blast camp entering the pro division, like. Absolutely. It's really close. And yep. and certainly Chicago Aftershock is up there. I just, I actually don't have as much of an association with co co uh, Chicago Aftershock, despite the fact that I played back then and I watched a lot of paintball. Um, so I don't have a lot of like nostalgia for that brand or the team. But uh, I know Todd Martinez and Todd Adamson are amazing. I know there's other staff there, the players. It's going to be really fun to watch. But I'm just so curious to see this rebuild with Ironman. They've gone through so many rebuilds in the last five years or something, six years maybe. It's I just want but them to be stable. this is the biggest one. I'm, it's the biggest yes. one. It's the biggest rebuild. And yeah. it's the longest running pro team in existence. Like the team is, bro, I'm, I'm not young. Look at the gray beard. <laughs> and like I, you know, played on the team uh, back, you know, 25 years ago, almost now or whatever. Well, yeah, 25, whatever. But and they predated me, you know, like this, the Ironman have been arrived. So I feel you. I mean, that, that is definitely one of the big, most captivating stories that I want to see, too. Uh, and I got and I got a dog in this fight. I mean, I had a chance to sit in with some of those dudes in the, the practice they had where they got kicked out of ASG. But uh, um, <laughs> but, you know, but even before that happened, I was like, hey, you know, it, like, look, guys, um, because the leadership wasn't Shane wasn't there. Mike wasn't there. It was like just the core group of, of the new pickups, you know, Stephen O'Mara, you know, Mike, uh, um, you know, so it was like it was Stephen O'Mara. It was Henry Sense, Tom Guest, uh, Kyle was there. It was like the, the main group of dudes, you know, like their their core and the leadership mm -hmm. wasn't there. And I was and I'd been in that situation like I'd been in the exact same situation that these guys are in. And we ended up doing well. And but and when I said to him, I was like, and, and on that team too, not even on another team, like on the Ironman, it was just, you know, in 1999. So I was like, Hey, I was like, guys, you have to find a way to like, to generate a, a trajectory for what you want to accomplish that has nothing to do with the leadership. So the leadership is going to say certain things to you. The leadership is going to want you to do these, you know, this is how we play this field, but this group of guys that, that you're looking around, like look around and see these guys. Like this is where it, this is where, you know, pick your metaphor, but this is where the potential hits possibility. And if you guys can't find this within yourselves, it's never going to happen because it's not going to be like, Shane's not the type of leader that comes in and goes, you know, Hey, this is exactly what you're doing here. Here are the X's and O's. You're going to shoot this way. Do that. No, that's not how, 
Shane doesn't run a paintball team like that. And that's also not how tournaments are won. Like that's how it begins, but that's not how the tournament is won. And so, um, and they were just all about it, bro. I was so happy to see the, you know, sparkle in their eyes. And they were like, yeah, they, you could see it. They're like, this is our team, you know, and we're going to build that culture. And that's one of the things I said, like, you have to build the culture within this group here. You know, it has to be built here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, man, I'm with you on that. I, I mean, again, there's 20 pro teams and 200 pro players, and there's a lot of these crazy stories and we're <laughs> going to tell them all to you come Vegas in a little bit, but I'm with you, Steven. I, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Look for more stuff coming at you from, uh, from Steve Peterson. Um, any last thoughts before we sign off, you know, like, well, okay. So that Ironman, that's, that's your first one. Any other one? Okay. Maybe not shock, but what's your next big narrative that you want to, you look, or maybe from a tactical perspective, you know, too, because like, you're great at breaking that, the tactics down. Uh, well, I actually, so that's actually a great segue. Uh, last thing I'll say, I just broke down the video or the, the layout for Vegas. Uh, as soon as it was released, I did a live stream. So if any divisional teams, I mean, I know that there, I always get a compliment from a uh, Corey field. He, he coaches a WCPPL team and I see him there every event. I release layout review videos for those layouts. And he tells me every time he watches them. So there is stuff to, I'm sure some pro players could probably learn maybe uh, something from a second opinion, but I just did that uh, video. I'm so curious about the wedge. I believe it's on the Dorito side of the field because it is such a stronghold bunker towards the snake side. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to watch. I think that we'll see a lot of really cool delay plays, double stacks the home, pushes up to the middles. But I will get it all on the Telestrator. It's going to be really fun to watch. And uh, so, yeah, follow my channel if you want to see more uh, educational paintball content. I... I'm working on a big project for my my personal channel, SVP Paintball, that I think is going to be uh, really good. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, more stuff to come for me with Go Sports. Man, Steve, thank you so much for everything you've been doing. And everyone out there, thank you guys so much for joining in. We do have this big battle about to go down. First event of the season, Vegas, March 8th through the 10th. And yeah, uh, again, 200 pro players, the best 20 teams in the world got the you know, also, also all the crazy stuff going on with the WNXL, the there's been, I mean, there's almost been more turnover in the WNXL than there has been in the NXL. So once we get to that main event and we see the best of the best out there on center court, can't wait to see that semi pro now with blast camp and paintball fit, both moving up into the pro division who what's going to happen in the semi pro division. We will see 2024 is going to be an absolutely amazing and fun year as a paintball fan. And can't wait to bring you guys all of that. So I'm Maddie Marshall. Steven, again, thank you so much here on Go Sports. And uh, we will see you guys in just a couple weeks in Las Vegas.